Good morning, everyone. You join me on a lovely summer's winter December day on a Sunday. I was editing the video on the Mazda. So I'm going to have to tell you that because I've been sat on this video for like nearly a month and just been busy with other stuff, I've managed to delete the first half of the video on accident because everything I do YouTube wise is on my phone and no one wants about 4 million years worth of clips on their phone. So I usually just edit the video and delete it load. But this time I managed to delete half of this video. So yeah, you're speaking to me in the future and I'm gonna just overrun what was probably in the start of this video, um, which is really annoying, but you have to bear with me. My Mazda Luce 1971, full of patina, brilliant car. In the last video we had, we actually got it running. Oh, I thought we did. Basically, I put a new carb on it. So the new carb was a bit funny. It was a few little issues we had uh, and played around with the timer and stuff like that, the spark, etc. and it sounded sweet. It sounded really good and I was like, sweet, that's cool. I can now get like the rest of it continued and like get it on the road and stuff. Turns out this carb is allergic to fuel. So yeah, 72 hours after the carb was fitted, I went to start it up again and it was running awfully. And I was like, what on earth is going on here? It was fine, like, literally a couple of days ago. I've not even touched it. It was sat in the workshop. It did nothing. And turns out the little needles on the bottom of the carb, where the, the flaps open when you accelerate, I have the car running, and I squirt brake cleaner down where the little pins are on the bottom of the carb. The carb basically just wants to die. So it's letting air in at that point. So that is annoying. The company I got it from off eBay, they literally refunded me. So that carb literally owes me nothing. It's better than the one I had but I still can't get another car for this car very easily. The problem with this boat anchor in the front of here is that literally no one in the world has one of these. I swear, I'm the only guy that's got one. But uh, we're gonna try and work with what we got. We'll see in the video what we was doing a bit more, but there is a massive problem right here. You see, we've got this lead cable tied to the here, all right? This car is doing something extremely weird and it's not without trying to figure it out and I've never seen it before. Don't understand why it's doing it, but I'll see if I can get it to do it now and I'll show you what's actually happening because to be honest, I've asked other people on this particular issue and they're like, what the hell is going on? I'm stumped. I'm really stumped. I'll try to show you what's going on. Hopefully it still does it. This car hasn't run for about three weeks, so it should start, it should start. Also, not in the video, but I already have done it. I took the radiator out, flushed it all out, made sure there's no dirt in there. I took the thermostat out because that was C solid. Can't find another one. The likelihood of me driving it very long with this engine in is not gonna happen. So I literally just sealed it back up, put it back on. And we got a new lower rad hose just there. The cap's new, the belt's new. Everything's quite new on this car. Anyway, I'm starting the car. Come on. Little sew machine, little sew machine. See this here? We have a spark jumping, right? And it's sort of not doing what it should be. That lead should be in the distributor cap. Let's see if I can get it in there without shocking myself. Look, we're missing, clearly misfiring. Hold it near it. Oh yeah, it's firing again. So let's put it in. Misfiring. Take it out. Running sweet if you hold it there. It's the only time it runs well. Misfiring again because it's not. Pretty weird, huh? 
every single time we've tried to diagnose it, it doesn't make any sense. So this car has new points. This car has decent leads. I have tried different leads on it. I've tried moving the lead over to number two or whatever. The problem stays in number one. So, okay, it's weird. When we first figured this out, I had a horrible dizzy cap. So I put a new dizzy cap, same problem, and it looked a bit cheap and nasty. So I put another dizzy cap on, same problem. Now I literally took the leads off altogether, put different ones on, same problem. Always in number one. Got a new coil, new points and condenser already. So we've got a good spark. I've checked it's got a good spark. I've cleaned all the terminals on the, not terminals, I've cleaned all the surface area on the shaft that the rotor arm sits on, just so there's no surface for us. And we get a good spark there and a good contact on each individual like lobe. But the problem's still there. It's literally just not firing on number one unless the lead is out of the dizzy cap. There's something sus going on and I've just been struggling to get past this car. This car is so hard to get past for. Uh, trying to find out what cars share the same platform and sh use the same engine. This car shares the engine, uh, not the engine, but the dizzy and rotor arm from a Mitsubishi Shaparo. So I've taken some bits off there. We'll see, that's where the dizzy cap came from. And I do have new old stock rotor arm, which has taken me quite a little bit of time to find. So I'm hoping this is the problem of that spark because that'd be great if I could find out why that's doing that. And the rotor arm is the only thing we haven't changed. And it does look a little old and ropey, but it should run nonetheless. But I'll get to that at the end of the video. And, uh, We'll see if it's fixed itself because as you probably just heard, we started doing the exhaust. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna throw you back into the video from three weeks ago. Watch that and then I'll catch up at the end. Yes, as you just saw there, there is another problem with this car because it's ancient, old and a disaster. So yeah, uh, I've worn a new cap, hopefully it fits. This didn't even say it was for this car. Uh, it was actually for a Mitsubishi Sapporo, but um, I think it was in the last video, but we already knew the cap was destroyed and there's a little Mitsubishi logo on it. Just there. So I'm pretty sure it's the same cap that I've ordered. So to eliminate that part, cap, I couldn't find the rotor arm, which is really annoying. I'm gonna have to look a bit further on. Uh, and we've got loads of leads so we can play around with uh, leads if that's the issue as well. So, so yeah, waiting for that so we can eliminate that part of making this car run nicely and properly. <sighs> Next issue. I have been running this car really loudly and it's really doing my head in. It's so loud. It sounds like a tractor. It's got no exhaust on it. It literally stops just where my finger is right now. Uh, yeah, it, it's screaming. It's horrible. There's a lot of fire going down there. And I should really put an exhaust on it because it's pissing the landlord off and yeah, it's gonna help with tuning it as well, making it run right. When it's screaming in your face and you're just here, it's not very good. So yeah, gonna put an exhaust on. We're gonna use part of the old exhaust. I've got a new silencer that I took off the Arbifa. I'm gonna stick that under the mat there. This exhaust is very temporary because honestly the engine is coming out and everything underneath will come out, so we're not gonna make a crazy job of it. Just wanted to silence this engine. That's all it needs to do. This is the downpipe. It's complete, but as you can see, we have quite the leak here. So all I'm gonna do is put a patch over this, weld it on, get that bit on, and then start trying to use some of the rest of the exhaust. I know that this is gonna be like pretty piss thin. I really don't want to, I haven't got any tube this size, it's quite skinny. So we're just going to put a patch on it, it's going to be thin, it's going to weld like shit. I'm going to wish I never started it, but it is what it is. Right, let's carry on. Wild and cold to the rusty metal. That'll do for a patch. Right, so I've got the downpipe on. It hangs down so low. 
and that's exactly where it is like bolted on from factory. Look at this thing. Like, how does it hang down so low? That's literally fully bolted up, up there, and it hangs down that low. No wonder it fell off. It really just got caught on a pebble. Anyway, we are gonna probably bend that. Um, I'm gonna run a straight pipe to here, and I need to find a way to get over there. And I uh, think I've found the tip for it. <laughs> That is like the perfect radius. When it has a rotary in it, that's what I want to put on the back, like 100%. I think this is a three inch, and it might stay like that. Maybe not as pokey, a bit further in. But yeah. There you go, that's some 275. That's a bit better. That's not so aggressive but still aggressive at the same time. That's going on there. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, here's what we're dealing with. CIB for box, turn on its side. You've got the old up piece that goes up and over. We've got a bolt in there on the exhaust mount with a rubber mount. I'm gonna weld the bolt to the exhaust and then I just need to go from here to here. Right, quick little exhaust is basically done. Just gotta take it off and weld it all together. I managed to find a little bend. It actually doesn't even look that bad. Obviously got the IB for box there. Got that bolt welded to there. I found this bend here. It's all tacked together. I found a straight and then I found a slip joint there. So I'm gonna put a clamp on there. So this back bit is removable. So it actually looks like a full on exhaust. I can't lie. No flexi, but we move. That's fine. <laughs> cool. Even the scrap exhaust gets nice worlds. Tip, back box, sleeve, take the other bit off, finish welding it, bang it back on, never look at it ever again. That's all welded up now, all pasted up. We've got no gasket at the front, so I literally filled it with RTV and like exhaust paste, so hopefully it just doesn't blow too much. Let's see what it actually sounds like then, shall we? It runs so much better with an exhaust. It needs a little bit of tuning, but... See that overflow pipe jumping off the fan? <laughs> Whoops. Like that there. It's quiet, man. That's so good. Once that, once we get a good spark on there, every time it misfires, it's uh, basically the, the lead's coming off it and it's giving us that unburned fuel because it's not sparking. I knew it would do a little bit, but like that, runs sweet. I did just turn the fuel down a little bit more. Like wound it all the way in, just pulled it out one turn, so there's hardly any fuel in it. And that seems to, wow. The engine's so quiet and everything. Right, I stopped filming and turned it off. And then I had an idea, well, Matt told me an idea. He's like, key bang it. I said, like, that's a great idea. It bloody key bangs, watch this. The flames come out the back of this, it's unbelievable. My landlord's gonna kick me out, man. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it uh, shoots a lot of fire out the back, I can't lie. I just watched that video back and uh, yeah, my landlord didn't even come over, so I'm all right. I knew that this engine was gonna love an exhaust, but I didn't, I didn't know it was gonna love it that much. Like it runs so much better with an exhaust. I know some people will watch the video before and they'll be like, what are you doing? Like, just sort that bit out first and sort this out first, what's the point? Uh, I think it's important to, you know, just sort of think about what we're dealing with here. I had to make an exhaust. I had to get this carb to then see if the engine's actually gonna run any decent at all. Um, it was running so bad that you gotta start with these things and work your way to it. If it was like, say for instance, my Beetle, I know that car, I have no air-cooled VW engines. I'd just buy everything that it needs and put it on and it would run sweet because I know that car. This car, I don't know. No one knows this car. Just getting it close enough to mess around to get it running enough to then go, all right, okay, I'll build an exhaust now. Um, so I know some people comment on the last video and they're like, what are you doing? Getting really angry about it, but. Chill out, man. Don't worry about it, it's not your car. Anyway, right, back to the future. Anyway, so I said at the beginning of the video, I got a new rotor arm, new old stock, took me a little while to find. I'm gonna put that in there and I'm gonna hope that that is the problem somehow. I don't understand why. If you've had something like this before, please let me know because it's doing my editing and I've never experienced dodgy spiral like this before. I've been trying to get this engine to run by just fixing little bits and bits and bits. If it was another car, I'd literally just change everything and start again, but I physically can't, there's no parts available. So I'm literally just taking it as it comes. And little bit by little bit, we're getting it to run. Even though that carb is not 100%, the main problem is it keeps like randomly misfiring when it's under load. And yeah, that's the main problem we got here. There we go. See, this is our rotor arm, which is not the best. But our new rotor arm, let's check if it's the same. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same. So I don't know if you can see that, but this one's got like a little bump there and then it's missing. And then there's another bump there and another bump there. So this one's got two bumps and this one's got a missing bump. I know that's just the plastic molding, but there might be a reason why it's there. It might just direct the spark a little differently. I don't know. Mitsubishi logo there. So that's how you know it's a Mitsubishi Separo rotor arm. I know that the spark actually goes up the like brass coppery thing, whatever you want to call it. But I'm literally clutching at straws here. I really want to know what the problem is. And if this doesn't fix it, I am stumped because everything else is new and works and we get a good spark. Uh, and it's always, 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 always on number one. And that, to me, does not make sense. So, here we go, shall we? Oh, that's a tight fit. The other one wasn't a tight fit. Ooh, that's promising then. The other one literally just fell on. So, we'll see, shall we? I've got a cable tie there, because it runs better there. And I repeat, it is always on number one. It won't move anywhere else. So it's not the lead, it's not the dizzy cap, it's not the rotor arm. I don't understand. It's sparking on every single lobe. It doesn't make any sense to me. 
So yeah, so yeah, if you can figure that one out, please let me know because I'm honestly just so confused as to why that is doing that. Worst case scenario, I'll literally just leave it cable tied to the lead. But on the load, it's like duh, 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 and it can't, it doesn't respond. Uh, it's, it like misfires under load, basically. It's probably just not getting the same amount of spark under load. I don't know. It's an actual mystery, cursed machine. I don't get it. I don't understand. So, yeah. I can say on the video is that we need uh, an extra mount on here, on the end, because that's hidden. I never welded the mount up here because, well, it simply didn't reach. So I've got to extend that, put another mount on the end because it does make a rattly noise when you're driving it. I drove around the yard off camera and the uh, exhaust sort of smashes into the valance over bumps and stuff. So I need to put another mount on there just to secure it. But one step closer to getting this thing on the road. I do have some more parts for this car. Number one, I've got a set of wheels for it. Temporary wheels nonetheless, but they were cheap and they were on Yahoo auctions. My friend Charlie imported them for me and he delivered them to the workshop. So I started filming a video on that, which will come out in due course. They might not fit, but just a little hint of what's to come. Got these as well, HEL, legends, legends in the game. They literally made these for me pretty much as soon as I sent them my old ones, which are in here. Literally took like less than 24 hours for them to make me a set of brake lines for this car, which is stupid fitment, stupid thread sizes, and they literally perfected them. They're in like a little carbon fiber sleeve. Oh mate, they're so good, so, so good. But give them a shout from me, go onto their Instagram, Get some braided brake lines for yourself and then tell them that I sent you. And they also sent me this hat, which I didn't realize was in the bottom of the box. So thank you, hell. Really appreciated. Got a bit distracted there. The uh, Mazda is dissolving out in the rain. Um, I've just discovered something terrible. I had the front calipers rebuilt. Now everything's blasted, new bleed nipples, cylinders, seals, everything. So. These are gonna come in handy. I sent these with some shims that sort of like go along here like this. So basically the caliper goes on and then the shims sort of like push in like that. They're cast, they're like this big and they sort of like just go in there, both sides. And that's what holds the caliper in because there's little split pins on the end of it. They didn't come back. And <laughs> now I'm worried, I am very worried because those are the only thing that holds the caliper in. And if they've thrown them away, I am royally screwed. I am gutted. So I can't really put the calipers on in this video like I was hoping. So got the drums skimmed as well. So, you know, they're ready to go. In one of the other videos, I had the rear drums off and you can see they were pretty new inside. So just gonna give them a skim and then clean up the shoes and cylinders. The cylinders already look new. So if they don't leak, bang on. Alongside the fact that we're gonna have to change all the hard lines on the Mazda as well, because they literally just rotted away and well, might as well just do all new ones and then we can drive it around, hopefully. New tires and yeah, it'll be on the road. But just thought I'd do this video, a little update on the car making the exhaust, making it run, showing you all the terrible issues I'm having, which don't make sense. If you know what that problem is with the distributor, let me know because I'm scratching my head quite a lot. I'm gonna wear a hole in the back of my head at this point. Now, hopefully in the next video of this car, it will be stopping and driving and running well and we can figure out the problem. Uh, but hopefully we find the little shims for the calipers because, well, if we don't, I'm screwed. And again, another set is probably gonna be near on impossible, so. Fingers crossed. We're gonna go home, because we've got some wet dogs, and it's chucking it down outside. Thank you for watching, goodbye.